Hello, moving along to the next standard testing item in a verification brings us to outlier testing. This is also a membership related testing request, focusing on accounts that are performing differently in a given composite than their peers that are in that same composite. How closely we should expect accounts to perform in a given composite goes back to that specific composite and how it was defined as to whether it was a more narrowly or broadly defined composite as GIPS gives firms and organizations the discretion to describe and define their own composites as they best see fit. For example, we would expect a composite that is being managed very strictly to a model to have far less deviation than a more broadly defined composite. A broadly defined composite could be a composite such as an international equity composite that has no set targets amongst various countries and or capitalization weighting, which could yield some very different performance within the international composite if those accounts were heavily weighted in different countries compared to other accounts in the composite. So when we look at outliers, we need to keep that in mind as far as how far of a deviation is so far that likely the account is in the incorrect composite. And that is the focus that the verifier is taking in this testing item. And the big thing that they are looking for is placement. So the question being, is this account in the correct composite? And is it discretionary? As well as why is it performing differently than we'd expect based on the other accounts performance in the composite? The verifier is going to take another sampling approach, just like all testing items during the verification. However, the outlier testing is a little unique in terms of their sample sizes and what they are sampling. Unlike membership changes, so entry and exit, the verifier doesn't have a specific set list going into the verification as far as what their population would be. Outlier testing population is going to vary based on the verifier and what they define as an outlier performance which may vary from verifier to verifier. If all accounts are performing very similar in a given period of time over various composites, your sample for outlier testing may be very small or non-existent. However, if it's covering a period of more dispersion and volatility in the market, we'd likely expect to see some more outlier accounts come up, hence a larger sample size from the verifier during periods of more outlier performance. So therefore, the testing is very focused on the actual data that is provided to the verifier at the initial phases of the verification and how these accounts are performing again compared to their peers. This testing is very much focused in the policies and procedures for how we have built out the composites in Appendix A, as well as some light touches on the definition of discretion. What the verifier is essentially doing is making sure that the accounts selected for testing meet the composite definition and description, as you can see in the example here for this all equity composite on the slide. The verifier is also looking for reasons why the account is being an outlier and making sure that those reasons are not violating any preset definitions of discretion at your organization. So the type of documents that a verifier is looking for to support this is really any sort of paperwork that points back to what the intended strategy is for that account. Specifically important for that is that it supports that that specific account owner, your client, has selected the given strategy that fits within that composite description. This can largely be tested and supported through contracts and, and investment guidelines showing that your client specifically requested a given strategy, and that's the strategy that's being followed for that client's assets. Other important information that a verifier is looking for uh, are his fee schedule. So seeing if it is maybe a bundled or non-bundled account in case that has implications to how you're assigning accounts to composites, as well as the reason for outlier performance. Again, the reason for outlier performance is intended to describe why the account is performing differently, but also making sure that if there is any unique considerations for that account, it's not violating the definition of discretion. Therefore, making sure that the account is still discretionary and placed in the correct composite. Other items that Long's Peak can provide uh, based on access to your system are transaction summaries and portfolio appraisals, which also support outlier performance. The verifier can take various steps in testing this, such as looking at transaction summaries and seeing if there are any timely cash flows that may have caused the account to perform differently than other accounts, or look at portfolio holdings to make sure that those holdings match how we're defining the composite 
or compare it to other accounts in the composite to help identify some slight differences and why that particular account may be performing as an outlier. Like all testing requests, the verifier will be flexible in the type of documents that we give them. At the end of the day, we need to give them some sort of paper trail to give them support that one, the account is discretionary, and two, the account is placed in the correct composite, even though it may be performing a little differently than other accounts within that same composite. So there's various different ways to go about this testing. And like we've touched on in other testing requests, Ongoing review of performance outliers is important and really helps this section of the verification. When Long's Peak is sending you back composite outlier performance on a monthly or quarterly basis, it's important to do detailed reviews and take good notes on these accounts because if there is outlier performance existing in your composites and we determine it to be appropriate and stay in the composite, those are likely samples that the verifier may pull up in testing. So if we've already done that review on the front end, that'll make this testing aspect of the verification much easier when we get to that point of the project. Please feel free to reach out with any questions on outlier testing. We'd be happy to discuss anything in more detail.